Hey everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I am using a technique called the Magic Watercolor Technique, I believe. And the story behind this card is that when I first finished this panel, I was kind of disappointed in myself and thinking, you know, and I didn't do this right. And then I threw it, so I threw it away and I deleted all the video of the whole card um, start to finish. And then I kind of thought about it and an hour later I was like, you know what, that's really not that bad. I, I should really share how I got this effect because it's really actually pretty. So <laughs> I had to reshoot how I did this. And so you, what you're gonna see here in the video is a little bit different from the finished card, but it, it the technique is all the same. So the first thing I did was prep my watercolor piece with um, an anti-static pouch. And then I'm gonna ink up this really large detailed flower stamp and um, use Versamark ink to stamp it. So it's kind of hard to see. And because the stamp is so large, I did have to stand up and then kind of tilt my head at an angle to kind of make sure I wasn't stamping over the top of it because Versamark, of course, is a clear ink. So it's kind of hard to see on the surface of the paper there. But I'm gonna go ahead and use um, Hero Arts white embossing powder. This is like my favoritest white embossing powder ever in the history of the world because it embosses so smoothly and very crisply. And I did wanna mention that because you're working with a fairly large image or lots of images, you do wanna make sure that you get your lines embossed completely. Like make tilt it in the light and make sure that you don't have any grainy, sandy looking spots. You want that embossing to all be smooth, a uh, bright white glossy finish and that tells you that it's all melted because if you don't um, you're gonna have a really big mess <laughs> ask me how I know <laughs> I've seen it happen too many times <laughs> so I'm gonna take some dilutions ink sprays and I use a dropper tool to get some of that ink spray loaded into my palette and then I've got my watercolor panel in a plastic tray and I'm gonna spritz it with a water mister and I'm actually gonna spritz a lot of water on there and get like puddles and I even came back because I kind of have OCD tendencies when it comes to this and it's like oh add more so <laughs> so I added more water and now I'm ready to bring back my paint tray and you'll see me uh, dry my brush off in between but because what I'm trying to do is not get any water diluted into the color I want to keep as much um of the concentration of color going as I can. And I'm not even painting, I'm just blobbing the color onto the puddles of water and letting the water just kind of push it and let it flow along the embossed lines of the image. So I'm not actually painting, I'm just blobbing and daubing. So this is cherry pie and it's going to wash out to kind of a really gorgeous pink color in those puddles of water. And then I went outside the lines and this is what happened on my original piece that kind of disappointed me. And then I realized, you know what? it's okay it's gonna work out all good so I came back to my orange flower and I decided to add some cherry pie to that to kind of give it more of a coral look kind of you know tone down the orange and make it more coral so that I would contrast with the orange that I used there in the center and there where I went kind of outside the lines I kind of pushed it around and then I decided you know what what's gonna happen if I take my water mister and just add more water and then tilt it and I was pleasantly surprised what happened was I got a faint color wash going all across the surface there and then I decided to add some green and this is dirty martini isn't that a great name for a shade of green it's absolutely gorgeous and I just love that Diane called it dirty martini <laughs> just don't drink it right <laughs> so I'm actually daubing some of the excess color away and then I might add some more depending on if I take away too much color and adding more orange here and there where I want more concentration of color and I'm just kind of, I'm not even painting, like I said, I'm just blobbing and tapping that concentrated color. And you can try doing this with Distress reinkers or Adirondack reinkers, but you really need a high concentration of color that comes from those reinkers or the Dilutions color sprays, because that's really gonna give you that vivid, vivid color effect. And then I kind of decided, oh, you know, let's add some more pink over here. So I spritzed some more water because the paper was starting to get dry there. And then I just picked up some color from the flowers and just kind of tapped it over there and spread it around and spritzed it some more to dilute it back out. And you just kind of do it, do this uh, process until you're happy. And then the biggest thing that you have to do next is to just walk away and let it dry. You could try heat emboss, heating it with your heat gun to kind of speed up the process, the drying process. But you do want to be careful that you're not getting so close with the heat gun that you remelt the embossing lines because then um, you can lock some of that wet ink that's sitting on the surface into that white embossing and you really don't want to do that. You want to preserve that white embossing. So I found it best to just walk away and let it sit 
for um, a couple hours until it was completely dry. And I just finished off the card there with um, a simple a sentiment that was white embossed onto a scrap of vellum cardstock. That greeting is from an Avery L set called Modern Leaves. And then I added a couple of white enamel dots and that's it. Glued it down really well to a white base card and I thought it turned out gorgeous and I'm really glad now that I dug it out of the trash. <laughs> Thanks for watching.